from breaking that. Officially given 15. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. Good starting position for the Panthers as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. To throw is Newton. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the huddle, no mental mistakes, or are they starting to look like a good offensive football team? It's a first down on a gain of 10. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. That, and that's what he did. From the 50, Newton. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sacked back at about the 43-yard line. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. And the return out shy of midfield to the 46-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Well, the first play in the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. There's Wilson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Owens. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. First down, Seahawks. Check, check. Walk with the four. Walk with Now Wilson on first down. Eluding the pressure right. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard go, or two shy of the 10. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he's able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. And now lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. On second down, it's Carson. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. No score after one on EA Sports. Wilson going to fake the give and keep it himself. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Hey, 
So the ball's moved to about the one after the penalty, first and goal. Come on, Kirby, come on. Check, 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 check. Good time. They'll try to run with Carson, and he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away, as his guys are on the board first here tonight. Well, that drive oh, took up an eternity. We finally have some action on the scoreboard. Yeah, but plenty of action prior to, because that drive took up all the first quarter before we spilled into the second, and finally, points were registered. On the other sideline, they're chomping at the bit just to get the football. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. Let's go. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey, and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Carolina. A big play there. An 80-yard touchdown as his guys can now take the lead with the extra point. Elliott good on the extra point, and they take the lead here at 7-6. to six. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards all told as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. He'll find Metcalf. First down, Seattle on a pickup of 13. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Metcalf once again the target, but it'll be second down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. And here's Wilson to throw again. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 12 yards there and a first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brian Burns able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They snap it at one. Now Wilson going for Metcalf on the deep ball. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. It's Shaq Thompson here with a pick. a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, 
and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. The ball's out. McCaffrey lost it. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. No coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover, but if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. Yeah, right <laughs> now. You know that in come regular season, he's going to be ready to go, and maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. They'll run on first down. Carson. In on the tackle there, Luke Keekley. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. From the 45 on second down, Wilson, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they've left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter. But I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Now, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Eight, eight. Gun, gun, gun. Check the on second and seven, Newton. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Here's Newton. Oh, so close to an interception. Read that beautifully. Got his hands on it. Couldn't get it. And it's second down. The name of the game is always on defense. Put pressure on the quarterback. And that's exactly what they've done today. It looks like they've got him a little bit rattled. That would have been the second interception in the first half. On second and ten, Newton. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Check 50. Check 50. Check 50. No run call here. They'll look to throw instead. He's going to look deep for more. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Shaquille Griffin knocking it away that time in coverage. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one. Knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. A good return there, 17 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. What? 
Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back to back. What a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two for one without ever even giving up the football. Wilson now six of ten in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. From the shotgun, Wilson. And oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. He already has two sacks to his credit, now another tackle for loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, they've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible. Because right now, he is wrecking things for them. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Why are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should stop. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now it's Newton. Room past the 20. Quick slant. Caught by Moore. He's at the 50. 30. 20. 10. 5. Touchdown, Carolina. DJ Moore in the final seconds of the first half. And now they can recapture the lead if they can make the PAT. Elliott good with a PAT. And that will give them the lead here as we get on towards halftime. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Expect to see a good number of backups going forward as we are back and underway here in preseason week two. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Okay, 
Second and two now. The penalty leaves him in pretty good shape. Pilot, 64, weak. Slam, slam. Showing it, showing it. 25, check 25, check 25. Ready, ready. On second down, here's Greer. He finds his man, that's Sweeney. He's at the 30, the 20. And let's hit this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A big play there. 71 yards. And the Panthers, they widen their lead. Elliott good on the extra point. And the lead is up to eight. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Throwing again on second down. Hunley. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing Hundley. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Looking to throw again on second down. Hunley is going to let this one go deep. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Jennings was the one he was looking for. Third down here. It's been a struggle for him accruing yards in this game, passing the football. So there he said, hey, I'm going to try to chuck it deep, but another incompletion. Has to be a little bit frustrating because of what you just described. It's been a struggle for him here in the second half, hoping for one big shot to get him out of the doldrums. And he locates Walker complete. And he's going to get this deep on a Carolina side of the field. It's a big play there for Seattle. 48 yards. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They're down here in the third quarter, trying to get something going. Going to the outside there didn't work out, though. Yeah, and from the cheap seats and from where you and I are sitting, <laughs> we, did, we did pay a pretty good price to get in here, right? You often wonder to yourself, why do you make that type of a call? That one went for no gain. But I think this offense thinks to itself, if we keep running these plays, eventually something may pop. It just didn't on that one. Throwing on second down. Humley. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. On third down, it's Pollard. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
So that's what that elbow in my ribs was all about. You thought they were going to throw the ball as well. Absolutely. I think everybody thought they were throwing the football. Caught them off guard. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you have the courage to make that type of a play call, a lot of times you actually get rewarded. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Jack Doyle there to make the grab as his guys have cut the lead down to two and he is a reliable target they like to get him involved they got him involved there for the score and they should he's a very good player remember they can use him in certain positions so many different spots and he usually comes through for them he'll look to throw goes right side and he's got it so they went ahead and went for two to tie the game, and it works out. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Rebound, fighter. They'll stay on the ground with Clement. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First and 10 at the 38 yard line. They fake the handoff now, Greer. Buying time. To, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. To try again after the sack, Greer. That's complete. It's Corey Clement. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. It's a gain of 20 as we wind down near 20 seconds left in the quarter. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got Thompson here, complete. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. A big play there. 51 yards as his guys are able to regain the lead. Well, that's a heck of a response to regain the lead after we had seen the touchdown to tie the game. I would say what we just saw there was a great amount of poise because typically when teams tie the game up, it's a little bit of a, how would you say, you kind of kind of take a step back and have to get yourself regrouped. They regrouped in a hurry, didn't they? They attacked back after they'd been tied. And in a big way, that was a statement-long touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Ready, ready. 
Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. They'll go option to the short side. Here's Pollard again. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball, who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Looking to throw on second down. Greer, now they set up the screen for Clement. So the screen good for only two, now it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense is able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. And he will have the first down, but he winds up paying for it pretty good. Here we go, set. 60 out, Law. 55 to Let him know, let him know. They run out of the gun with Clement. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. There he goes, left side. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big play there for Carolina. 62 yards. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll go to Adams, try to pound it in. And he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Josh Adams taking it in. And the Panthers, they widen their lead. Nice job of polishing off that drive, and all the credit there goes to that play prior. Yeah, it certainly does, because after that big play, I think resistance almost felt futile at that point, didn't it? And the very next play, they come right back, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and put it in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And Walker has it. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 12, first down Seahawks. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Able to get there and pick it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. They've really distanced themselves. They have put the pedal to the metal, I guess, so to speak. So definitely have them in the rearview mirror, don't they? I mean, you're exactly right. Being able to string together these drives that end up in points, it's almost like a run in basketball to create that distance, and they're on a really big time one right now. It becomes contagious, doesn't it? It absolutely does, because oftentimes it translates to your defense as well, because they're excited about getting the ball back for their offense that's playing so well. Well, they are clicking right now. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner, and there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. As to you said big third down, I'd put the word big in capital letters. He's got the lane, and there he goes. Pass the 20. And he does take it in for the touchdown, but a flag on the field, and I don't think this is going to stand. Yeah, don't put the points on the board just yet. Brutal, so take away the long touchdown. It's a cruel game sometimes, partner. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? On play action, rear to throw it. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Polardi now on to punt as he sends this one away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Rashawn Golden. And he will take it across midfield and down to the 45. Jennings was the one he was looking for. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense.
So this one is over. A victory for Carolina. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long.